Good morning and welcome to Church Online. We are so glad you are joining us today. If you can go ahead and do me a quick favor before we get going this morning, go ahead and click that share button, regardless of the platform you're watching on, whether that be Facebook, Church Online, or YouTube. We believe here at Restoration Church that you're not watching this broadcast by accident. We believe that you are watching it on purpose and that God wants to do a work in your life today. So I want to encourage you not to just simply sit on your couch and be a spectator, but stand up and be a participator. Sing and worship. Lift your hands. Take notes during the message. And let's engage together with what God wants to do in our lives today. We have multiple ways that you can give here at Restoration Church. You can go to our website, which is r4sq.org, and you can click the Give tab. Or you can download our church app in your phone's app store. Just download the app, slide over, click the Give tab, and you'll be taken to a screen where you can designate your giving. Or you can mail your uh, tithing offering in to our Madison campus, which is 5810 Walshrayana Highway, Madison, Alabama, 35758. We have amazing content for your kids today. We have a full toddler service, we have a full elementary service, and we have resources for kids and parents throughout the week. And you can get those resources at r4sq.org slash kids. That's r4sq.org slash kids. We also have multiple ways that you can request prayer. You can send us an email to amen at r4sq.org, or you can stick around after our service today where you can click the Zoom chat in the link in the description, and you'll be taken to a Zoom call where you can get prayer from our campus pastors immediately following our service. We are so excited about what God wants to do in your life this morning. So go ahead and stand as we get going with our service today. Good morning, Restoration Church. We are so excited that you are joining us this morning, wherever you see yourself, whether that's in your car or at home, or maybe you're still laying in bed. We are so excited to worship with you. So I ask that whatever you're doing, that you just posture your heart in adoration to God and watch him enter into your circumstances, into your home, and to change your lives. God, we love you and we praise you and we welcome you in this place. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. You move the mountains, told the wind and waves be still. You cast out demons, bid the empty soul be filled. And now there's breakthrough, and now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power. 
a victory. We stand in authority. All for your glory. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, Lord. We walk in your victory. We stand in authority. All for your glory. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, Lord. We walk in your victory. Father God, Lord, we come to you this morning, God, and we're so thankful, Father, that we get to be together and we get to worship with our family. Father, even if it's online this morning, God. Father, I thank you for each person that's watching this morning, God. Lord, I thank you for their lives. I thank you for the purpose that each of them hold this morning, God. Father, we're so thankful that in this time of uncertainty, one thing is certain. And that is you. Father, I thank you that you have kept us, God. Lord, I thank you for your, your peace during this time, God. Father God, I ask that you would just step into each home this morning, God. Lord, that you would step into each situation this morning, Father. God, I thank you that it is your breath that fills our lungs this morning, God. And Father, we ask you to have your way in this service today, God. Father, we thank you for who you are and for what you've done. God, we thank you for the things that we are expecting to come forth. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen.
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. getting that sometimes it feels when we come to the presence of God like there is a glass and, if, and, and what I mean by glass is there's something that seems to feel like it's separating it's like a barrier and I don't know about y'all but sometimes in my quiet times as I'm going throughout the week I feel like I hit those barriers those glass moments with God where I can see him on the other side but I, sometimes I can't feel his presence have you ever been in need of a touch from his presence, to know that he's near in your circumstances, to feel that he's close. If you don't know this already, God is for you. He is for you. He is for me. He is for our church. He is for that church and that church and the global church. He has not left us in this season. And he says tonight, I keep hearing this all night long. He says, I wanna shatter the glass. Morgan, I want to shatter the glass, the thing that seems to be the barrier between me and my people. Now is the time of revival. Now is the time of awakening. And I'm here to say tonight, let it happen. Receive the presence and the power of God in your life. Because I promise you, he's with you and he is for you. And this is not over. Whatever it is you're facing, it can't have. Not that it won't, it can't have the final say when you allow Jesus to be the center and the focus of your life. So I want us to go back in to that bridge again because this is our time. It's our time to remember that God is for us. It's our time to praise and that our praise would echo so loud that it would shatter the glass. On the other side of that glass, God is beckoning us. And wherever you're at, if you're in your car, if you're in your bed, whatever you have to do to shatter the glass, shatter it. Jesus already tore the veil. He is enough. His blood is enough. But when will we allow our praise to rise up with inside of us? 
help us and reach and reach for him. Jesus. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for engaging and participating with us during our time of worship. We are so glad that you are joining us for our church online experience today. We want to invite you to pray with us for our Focus Church. What's the Focus Church? It's a church that we pray for throughout the week. So we want to invite you again to pray with us for Kirkland Baptist Church located in Taft, Tennessee. So please continue your prayers throughout the week. 
I also want to remind you guys to continue to pray for our Restoration Church leadership and our Restoration Church elders. We are still praying and strategizing on when to reopen and get back into the building. Thank you for praying for us. And let's also remember to give. You can also give by going to our website, r4sq.org. Click the Give tab. Go to the app or just mail it in to 5810 Waltrana Highway in Nash, Alabama, 35758. So listen, let's pray for that Focus Church this week. Let's pray for our tithe and offering, and let's pray for our hearts to receive the word of God today. Lord God, thank you for your presence that we are experiencing through this church online experience. Thank you, God, that you are not limited to a building, but God, your presence is where we are, the church. Father, I pray that you would bless uh, the Focus Church this week, God, that you would bless Kirkland Baptist Church and just lead them and guide them and give them wisdom on how to engage their community with the gospel and give them a uh, strategy, God, on how to navigate these different times that we find ourselves in as the body of Christ. So, Lord, just provide for them, protect them, lead them by your Holy Spirit, and just anoint their team, God, to be the church you are calling them to be during this time. Lord God, we pray for our tithe and offering. God, we lift it up to you as an act of worship, God. Lord, I pray that you would receive it, that you would bless it, break it, and multiply it, God. Give us wisdom as a local church to steward and use these funds well to advance the gospel in our area. Now, Father, by your Holy Spirit, please open up our hearts to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through the Word of God. Speak, Holy Spirit. Transform us. Transform our hearts. Transform our minds. Help us hear and respond in obedience by faith in what you're saying to us in your Word today. Thank you, God, for your presence. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go ahead and click that share button because we're about to hear the Word of God from our senior lead pastor, Huey Hudson. I want to thank you so much for joining us today for our online service. I also want to welcome those who've joined me in the building today for this, this presentation of God's Word. And today we're going to be reading from the book of Ezekiel. I'm going to read verses uh, uh, 1 through 5 from chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 25 through 28 from chapter 1 and also verses 1 through 2 from uh, chapter 2. So Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1 says, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, which is the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came, to, came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Bozai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with rage and fire engulfed in itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Also within it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was the, their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Verse 25. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings. And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was the likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist, and down what I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. So was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. God, I thank you today for the reading of your word. I thank you, Lord God, that in the midst of even times like now, you speak. And Lord, I know you're speaking to your people expressly today, bringing forth understanding and revelation that many so desperately need. And God, my prayer is that 
out of this word or through this word, you will speak to those that are out there, those that are in this room, the words of the living God. That we will hear what thus says the Lord. Open our spirits to your leading and embrace fully what you're saying to us today. Holy Spirit, I welcome you, sir. As I yield my memories to you, I invite you to come and have your way. Speak to God's people the word of God today. Give us all ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, today I'm excited to share with you a word from the Lord entitled, Order Out of Chaos. Order Out of Chaos. And this word is to encourage you to know that God has been and God is currently at work to restore order to certain areas of our lives. I also want you to know that the need to restore order was not necessarily precipitated by the current crisis that we find ourselves in. Though these past few months have created chaos for some, I believe God has used this time and is continuing to use this time to slow down our lives to bring order out of chaos. I believe that what many had accepted as being normal was actually a chaotic state of existence. Chaos is defined as a state of confusion or disorder. It is the lack of organization of order. Webster also defines chaos as the infinity of space or formless matter that preceded the existence of the ordered universe. That was the state of existence described in Genesis 1 verse 2, which says the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. In other words, the earth existed in a state of chaos. During the establishment of the church, the followers of Jesus found themselves in chaos because of great persecution. In the midst of this chaos, Jesus appeared to John the Revelator. And John wrote in Revelation chapter 1 these words. He said, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. And I love that. He said, your companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about his chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet was like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, John said, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. In the book of Ezekiel. We see the, the people of God in a state of chaos. Ezekiel was born and raised in the land of Judah and was preparing to become a priest in God's temple when the Babylonians came and carried him away into captivity along with some 10,000 other Jewish people. 
Israel was on the brink of complete destruction. There was utter chaos. Four to five years later, when Ezekiel was 30 years old, God raised him up to be a prophet to his people. And during the first six years that Ezekiel ministered in Babylon, Jeremiah was preaching to the Jews still in Judah, and Daniel was serving in Nebuchadnezzar's court. During this time of captivity, persecution, and enslavement, God raised up these three powerful voices to speak to his people because God speaks to bring order out of chaos. The river Chabar, which connected the the Euphrates in Babylon, was the the location of the Jewish settlement where, 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 where Ezekiel and the exiles were. And some may wonder why God would raise up a prophet for a people in exile. He did so because the word of God brings order out of chaos. God wanted Ezekiel to, one, help the exiles understand why they had been taken captive. Two, dispel the false hope that the captivity was going to be short. And three, bring a new message of hope to his people. And the fourth thing was, God wanted Ezekiel to call his people to a new awareness of their dependence on him. And though the people did not respond positively to Ezekiel's message, they heard and they knew the truth. When chaos arises out of catastrophe, people respond in different ways. And two of the more common negative responses are denial and despair. Denial is a refusal to acknowledge there is a major problem, that there is a catastrophe. Denial shuts his eyes to what's real or it looks the other way. Denial manages to act as if everything is all right when it is not. People in denial, they take refuge in distractions and in lies, and in fantasies. But for many, some of those distractions have been taken away during this time, forcing them to face the music or face the truth. And I want to say that again. When people go into denial, they take refuge in distractions, things that distract them. They take refuge in lies, untruths, And they take refuge in fantasies that they create. But for many, many of you out there, some of those distractions have been taken away by the Lord during this time because he's forcing you to face the music or face the truth. Despair, on the other hand, paralyzes people so they begin to shut down, refusing to do what they can to exercise hope and faith or do what they can to make their situation better. God is the author of hope. He's the author of faith. And he wants us to live a good life, a better life than even what you enjoy now. No matter how good your life is, God wants you to live a better life. But despair is an enemy of God's plan for you. So despair will want to cause you to shut down and give up and not do what you can do to find that better life. These two conditions describe the mindset of Israel during the time of Ezekiel. It may also describe the mindset of many of you, but God always has an answer and he will speak to you to bring order out of your chaos. Though the people of God were blind due to their their denial of of their despair, Ezekiel was not blind because Ezekiel saw. Allow the Lord to open your eyes that you may see what he sees. Ezekiel saw what the people could not see or what the people would not see. And he saw it in wild and unforgettable images. Ezekiel saw in elaborate and and exuberant detail that God was at work in the midst of the catastrophe, catastrophe, sovereignly using what was catastrophic for his good. Ezekiel saw 
that God was at work in the midst of the catastrophe, sovereignly using what was catastrophic for his good. And it's rel- Ezekiel's revelatory message to God's people was this. Embrace God during the worst of times. It's not the time to turn your back on God, but it's a time to embrace him. It's a time to cry out to him. It's a time to pray for him to open your eyes that you may see what he sees. During their time of captivity, the people of God nearly lost their identity as his people, but they did not. Instead, they emerged from that catastrophic century, robust and whole. And the reason was in large part Ezekiel's message to them. Because he allowed God to use him to speak a message of truth, though the message was filled with judgment and and the proclamation of difficult of difficult times ahead. The people of God came out on the other side of their captivity better than they went into it. And I've said from, 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 from the very beginning of this that as we draw close to God and trust God, even through our current day crisis, you're going to come out better than you went in. And I hold fast to that. But you got to let the Lord come and speak to you that he may bring order out of the chaos that you find yourself in. Listen, God's people were not without explanation and direction. And neither are we. But if we reject the sovereignty of God, refusing to walk in the manner he directs, we may just remain in a state of chaos. But when we turn our ears to heaven and listen to what the Lord is saying, out of chaos, God will bring forth order. And the one thing that God uses to bring order out of chaos is God speaks. In Genesis, as the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep, God spoke. In the book of Revelation, while exiled on the Isle of Patmos for preaching the word of the Lord, Jesus came to John and Jesus spoke to him. And in the book of Ezekiel, while God's people languished in captivity, God opened the heavens and spoke to them through the prophet Ezekiel who wrote this. The hand of the Lord was upon him in that place. And that place was the place of captivity. John also said that the Lord's hand or the Lord put his hand upon him. You see, not only would God speak to you, but God will come to you and God will place his hand on you if need be to get your attention. Because God wants to bring order into your life. The same God who called light out of darkness. The same Jesus who visited John while exiled on Patmos and the same God who spoke to Ezekiel is speaking today. He is speaking to bring order out of chaos. And there are four primary areas I want to identify where God is at work to restore order. Four primary areas. Now, there are more, but I'm just I'm just going to cover four. Number one is to order to rest. Please hear me in this. God put the world in time out. God put the world in time out. Now, some of you will argue that what we're experiencing, God did not create. And I agree with you. Yet we also have to accept that God allowed it to happen. So regardless of how you see it, the fact is God pushed the pause button on our lives. He pushed the pause button on our job. He pushed the pause button on the commerce of the world. God even pushed the pause button on our ability to gather together and worship him. He pushed that pause button because we needed a sabbatical from so many things that had consumed us. Life had become a continuation of ongoing activities. This sabbatical brought us to a screeching halt. So many things that were creating chaos in our lives, even some good things were taken away. Everybody and everything 
needs to rest. God wants everything he created to go through periods of dormancy. Periods of time where normal physical functions and activities are suspended or slowed down and in some cases even put to sleep for a while. In Exodus 23, 11, God commands that in the seventh year, the land is to rest and lay fallow. Even God rested after six days of creation. In response to the religious leaders criticizing him, healing the sick on the Sabbath, Jesus said in Matthew 12, 8, the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. You see, according to Jewish traditions, healing was not allowed on the Sabbath day, except when there was there was danger of life. Even then, measures could be taken only to, to prevent the condition from getting worse, but nothing was to be done to improve it. Jesus countered this obvious fallacy saying it is indeed lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And his statement in Matthew 12, 8 laid rightful claim to his deity. And since he gave the Sabbath, he also had authority to do with it what he wills. And when we find and what we find throughout the, the scripture that Jesus often resorted to isolated places to rest. He practiced his law, his law of Sabbath rest. You see, the Sabbath is not just a time to do nothing. It is also a time to hear what God is saying. And people have gotten so busy with life, not taking time to rest, making them too exhausted to hear what God is speaking. We can become so busy, even in ministry, that we neglect getting the rest we need and the physical weariness begins to affect our spiritual connection to God. And I want to say that again. We can become so busy, even in ministry, that we neglect getting the rest we need and the physical weariness that we, we find ourselves in begins to affect our spiritual connecting with, connection with God. And we see that in Matthew chapter 28. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 26. As Jesus faced perhaps his greatest moments of angst and trepidation, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and he took his followers with him, his disciples, those closer to him. He took them with him. And he said to them, my soul is crushed. With grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Jesus didn't go a little further and, and bowed his face to the ground and prayed. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. So he said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you are not given to temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. When we're physically weary, we become spiritually unaware. That's good. God wants to sharpen our spiritual awareness. So he put us in time out to bring forth his order to rest out of the chaos that many of us were living in. Number two is the order to return to personal disciplines. How many of you would admit that you, you had kind of let things slip a little bit spiritually? That perhaps you'd grown spiritually lazy. We can be such creatures of habit and, and going through the motions of life can become, can become our norm. But I believe during this time, many of you have improved your spiritual disciplines. You've been spending more time in the word. Perhaps spending more time in prayer, communing with God, fellowshipping with God. Things that should have been a constant have become irregular. Sporadic, disorderly, your spiritual life had become chaotic. Your ability to hear from God had become difficult and non-existent. So God pushed the pause button on your life to slow things down and give you a chance to reset your spiritual life. Take, it, take advantage of what God has done for you. Many of you already have. And, and because you responded to the Lord, you're now in a turnaround season in your life. As you've created these new disciplines, you're now experiencing a, a turnaround, a, a turnaround that for some also included improving your physical health. 
Perhaps you started walking, jogging, doing other types of physical exercises, maybe eating better. Being stuck at home also created a, a good time for some of you to rediscover another good discipline that had become somewhat of a lost art, and that is the art of cooking. Instead of consuming fast foods and other types of processed foods on a regular basis, you got in your kitchen and you cook meals. All of these things are helping you reset the things in life that had gotten out of order, things that had become chaotic. God is speaking. And many of you, you're hearing and you're responding and you're seeing God bring order out of chaos. Number three is the order to restore family life. Now, this third order is closely connected to the second, but its impact has different results. The time out that God put us in has made it possible for many people to spend more quality time with their family. Now, I know there are exceptions to every rule, and your family may be an exception to this. There's some people in key positions who have been required to spend more time away from their family than perhaps before. But for the majority of us, this order has been the rule. This restoration of family life includes families sitting down to eat a meal together. My wife and I have eaten more, have eaten more meals together these last two months than we did perhaps the previous Two years. Why? Because of the busyness of life. But as our lives slowed down, we discovered how good it was to just sit down and break bread together and just talk. Sometimes talk about nothing, just talk. But sometimes talk about things that are relevant, things that are important, things that maybe we had not slowed down enough to communicate about. As I thought about family spending more time together, a funny video I saw when the stay-at-home orders were first being put in place came to mind. On this video, a man is being interviewed about the pending quarantine. And the interviewer says, because of coronavirus, you're going to be quarantined, but you have a choice. Do you, A, want to, want, do you want to A, quarantine with your wife and child, or, or B? And without hearing what option B was, the man blurts out B, 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 B. I'll take B. Don't even know what it is, but if I got a choice of spending time with my wife and child or something else, give me the something else. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> and although it is funny, I believe it also speaks to the fear that some people have about spending time with people that they live with, but maybe they don't know. They're strangers living in the same household. And the thought or idea of having to be quarantined with them became a fearful thing. We got so busy with life that we let not spending time with our family become our norm. And I don't believe that's okay with God because God created the family unit. So God put us in time out to restore family life, to bring order out of chaos. And number four is the order to advance God's kingdom on earth. Now, some may think that not meeting in our buildings has hurt that order, but I would argue just the opposite. Yeah. The body of Christ, I believe, had become too comfortable with our meetings, so God forced the church to exist outside the walls of our gathering places. Churches had to find new ways, innovative ways, spiritual-led ways or spirit-led ways to reach and disciple others. In the book of Acts, we see as the church was being established, small groups, meetings, and homes were the norm. But the church today, especially the Western world church, 
develop a system more institutionalized than organic. Now, please don't take this to mean we're to forsake our time to worship together, for I do not believe that we are. I love coming together in worship. But I do believe that the more small groups we create throughout our communities, the more we will advance God's kingdom. Our times of, the, of gathering are, are times of corporate worship and fellowship, but the church has to, be, has to do more than that if we're going to disciple people on a more personal level. Small groups allows for this, as well as it allows more people to be raised up as leaders and entrusted with helping others to grow in their faith. In countries like China, where Christians are persecuted, the church was forced to go underground. But today, Christianity is the fastest growing religion in China. Amen. As Americans, we will probably never have to go through that type of persecution. But could it be that God chose another way to force us out of our buildings so that he may advance his kingdom? Could it be that what we thought was a sense of order God viewed as chaotic. And he's using this time of being forced out of the buildings to bring new growth to the body of Christ. Remember, and I believe this, I believe God wants each one of us to reach at least one other person, if not more. But when four walls represent the ideal church, most people become consumers instead of contributors. God wants all of us involved in his work of advancing the kingdom of God on earth. I've given you four things that I believe God is restoring order to. Four areas where he's at work to bring order out of chaos. But I know there are other areas where God wants to restore order. Perhaps other areas in your life. So let me conclude with these questions. What in your life still exists in a state of chaos? What does God need to bring order to this in your life? Will you open the ears of your spirit that God can speak to you about whatever it is? How does God bring order out of chaos? He speaks. He may not speak what you want to hear, but God will speak what you need to hear. Amen. Are you willing to listen and obey the voice of God? God is speaking. He's wanting to bring order in areas of our life where there has been none. He wanted to take those things that we thought were normal and help us to understand that they were out of order, yes. disorderly, or chaotic. And he's now speaking to us about those very things to, to help us understand that he's bringing us out of that, that we can find the order he wants us to have. God has put us in this, this period of time out because he wants to make our lives better. Will you allow the Lord to speak to you that he may better your life? What is God saying? Are you listening? And are you willing to obey? Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for this time of sharing your word with your people. And Lord, I believe this is such an important word for today. For I believe, Lord God, many of us, we, we, we've, mis, we, we've misunderstood what you was doing and why you was doing certain things. Lord, with your word tells us that you're in all things working for our good. And we have to hold fast to that. And we have to embrace you, God, in moments like now, like never before. So, Lord, I pray that for, for those that, that are listening, God, that, that the areas of their life where chaos has, 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 has been their norm, that they will open their ears, the ears of their spirit, and allow you to speak to them, God. I pray, Lord God, that they will have ears to hear what you are saying and that they will have a spirit to obey the word of God. 
Lord, open up the heavens, God. You are not a respecter of persons, but you are a respecter of faith. And God, I pray that we'd have the faith to believe that even as you spoke, God, to John on the Isle of Patmos, even as you spoke, Lord God, through Ezekiel to your people, Lord, I want us to have the faith to know and believe that you're going to speak to us today. So, Lord, speak to your people like only you can do and bring forth order out of whatever chaos exists in their lives. And, Lord, do it, I pray, for your glory and your glory only. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray the Lord has blessed you through this word. Listen, pray, listen, and obey what the Spirit of God is saying to you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. Wow. I don't know about you, but that was a very impactful message from our senior lead pastor, Huey Hudson, how God brings order out of chaos. Man, good stuff. Listen, we want to encourage you now to engage with us one of two ways. You want to see some of your church family? Man, click the digital lobby link in the description. It's a Zoom link. We want to hang out with you, see your face, share some laughs, and just connect together as a church family. So just click that link in the description for our digital lobby. If you need prayer, our campus pastors are on standby right now to pray with you. So just click that Zoom link in the description so you can have a campus pastor pray with you right now. Listen, if you want to catch up on some of our content, go to our YouTube channel, Restoration Forest for Church. Click that subscribe button so you can catch up with all of our content that we have been posting week to week. Listen, we love you guys so much. God bless you, and we will see you next week.